Welcome to another technical episode of Cloud Adventures. My name is Melody. I'm a solutions architect at AWS. And today with me, I have Booking.com. Kushagra, would you like to introduce yourself? Sure. First of all, thanks a lot, Melody, for having me here. Uh, I'm Kushagra, a senior security engineer at Booking.com in the cloud security space. And previously, I've been associated with fintech scale-ups in the consulting industries, mostly working with regulated environments. Thank you for being here. Uh, in the business video, Georgia spoke a little bit about Booking's very own shared responsibility model within the AWS shared responsibility model. Uh, could you speak a little bit more on the purpose of why this was formed, as well as the challenges it aimed to solve? Sure. So lately, Booking.com's cloud footprint grew significantly. And when we looked at the scale of it uh, and looking at the AWS shared responsibility model, there was an obvious question, what do we do about security in the cloud? because it cannot be attributed to a single team within Booking, be it platform or security. And at the same time, we wanted to avoid the notion of, you know, saying that security is creating friction during such a large scale adoption. Uh, not to mention, you know, the various requirements that comes from risk and compliance teams. Uh, another interesting take, which we wanted to, you know, sort of get right from the get-go is uh, tackling all business units and the regulatory requirements they come up with. So to sort of, you know, build a one-size-fits-all solution for all the business units in there. That's very interesting. So um, could you walk me through a little bit more on what were the technical details on how you built, how you uh, overcame such challenge that you just described? Yeah, sure. So from a security standpoint, uh, defining the model wasn't a straightforward process because we need to take into account the nature of the resource, the type of the service, the dependencies, and have a clear segregation of duties between platform and development teams, uh, as well as security. So what we came up with is a very interesting concept called as baseline flavors, because this gave us the flexibility to define business level, business unit level controls, and at the same time, we have clear ownership of who owns what. As I said before, we didn't want to increase the complexity of the model, so we divided the model into four high-level slabs, and for each of the slabs, we attributed it to specific platform development and security teams in terms of ownership. So the first slab is the AWS organization-wide controls, which you see on the screen. And in here, what we say is all the non-negotiable controls ended up on this level one. So think about it as AWS service control policies to have global regional restrictions, to have security and baseline resource protection, security enforcement, and at the same time have auto enablement of AWS services like Amazon Guard Duty and AWS CloudTrail. Uh, on the second layer, we had AWS organizational unit level controls. So in here, if you see on the screen, what helped us is that we attributed the flavors to the specific organizational unit on the screen. So this gave us the possibility to have service restrictions, cross-environment access patterns, uh, security controls via, again, SCPs, and also tooling resource deployment for your internal and external integrations. Uh, what's interesting here is that we were able to have OU and account level exceptions due to the nature of how we define the baseline flavors. Now, moving on to the slab three, which is AWS baseline and flavors, uh, in here, we followed a structure where we have mandatory global modules. So these are the resources and the configuration that goes into any flavor, no matter what. So again, going by the non-negotiable approach. Then for the down, we had a flavored approach. So for example, here we say flavor A is PCI environment. And for your PCI environment, you might have additional controls to satisfy compliance and regulatory requirements. And then you can put in flavor specific configuration into this specific flavor. What's nice about this setup is that it gave you flexibility because not all your PCI flavor controls would be applicable, for example, your sandbox flavor. So this was a really sweet spot which we were able to get flexibility. Then the fourth layer is the AWS monitoring baseline. So we have a notion at Booking is that we monitor whatever we prevent or we try to prevent to sort of close the loop. And in here, we went with the same concept to have mandatory global policies which apply to all the AWS accounts, no matter which flavor they belong to, and then having specific flavor level policies. So for example, for PCI, you might want to have additional policies uh, again. So you put them in the flavor A configuration, which is PCI in this case. And then towards the end, no matter which flavor you are coming from, we had our internal reporting workflow where we do finding enrichment with ownership information, contextualization, putting in the remediation steps. So before the findings actually end up with the developers, they have the necessary know-how on how to address that finding. So yes, uh, this is basically the uh, booking.com security shared responsibility model in a nutshell. So thank you for sharing. It sounds like there was a lot of thought behind the overlaying controls to cater to the different 
uh, use cases and applying increasingly restrictive guardrails depending on the use case. Uh, could you speak a little bit more on the journey to crafting such a solution? Yeah, sure. Uh, that's a very interesting question. So uh, as I said before, it's not a straightforward process to define a permission boundary with the ever-changing nature of the cloud environment. So think about it as whenever AWS launches a new service or a new IAM namespace, security teams need to go into the depth of the IAM universe you know, to find out what goes into the boundary, which are the critical actions we should be preventing or monitoring. And it's not an easy challenge, you know, to find for security teams to go into the depth of the IAM universe to, you know, find out which uh, actions should go into the permission boundary, what are the critical actions that we should be preventing or monitoring. And in this regard, we also wanted to tackle all the risk and compliance requirements within that. So as a whole, it's very difficult to build a boundary which is static and that is like, you know, one size fits all solution, right? So what we came up with is at booking.com, we built dynamic flavored permission boundaries. So based on the template and all the inputs that you have, be it account level exceptions, risk compliance, uh, risk and compliance requirements, uh, regulatory requirements, we build these on the fly, and these can be unique for every account yet secure. So overall, the permission boundary provided by AWS is sort of the core component uh, of our baseline, if you if you may say. You mentioned something interesting. So technology is ever evolving. What are some challenges when approaching this model and how you overcame them? Right, so uh, it was very interesting. So when we were very late in our permission boundary definition journey, uh, we hit up, we got hit with a very interesting uh, error, as you, you might call, which was the character limit of permission boundaries. Because everything uh, on AWS in, when it comes to IAM has a character limit, be it service control policies or permission boundary. And at that point, we got into like a conversation with AWS account team, service team, you know, to see uh, are we doing everything the right way that, that it should be. And the outcome was that we need to find the right balance between what goes into a service control policies versus permission boundary. Because your service control policy should most more or less have things that don't need frequent change or are not very granular. Whereas things which you might expect deviations or exceptions as you might call it can go into the permission boundary because that's where you need the flexibility. So it was a matter of finding the right balance to distribute, you know, what goes where. And with this, we were able to, you know, uh, get way under the character limit and also, you know, have our baseline as a whole. Uh, with this, I'm not saying that in the near future, we might not get hit with another character limit, but that's a challenge for the future. It's great that you mentioned uh, the different collaboration that happened, not only just within Booking.com, but also with AWS, account teams, and service teams. Um, what would you say is the vision for the cloud security uh, going forward? Sure. So as a cloud security team at Booking.com, we are on a continuous journey you know, to provide security vetted modules to development teams. So we abstract the control layer and they can focus on delivering value to the business. What's interesting here is that we also want to collaborate with development teams early in the cycle. So security is sort of not a gray area for them, but they know what all it entails to build a service on AWS. And what are the four layers of controls that we spoke about earlier uh, uh, mean, mean for them? Because at the end, they own a part of it. That sounds great. Uh, what's next for the cloud security team? With the introduction of uh, all the new Geni services by AWS, uh, uh, it's a very interesting challenge of you know how you can fine tune the Booking.com shared responsibility model to cater to these services, right? Because every team has a different use case, the way they want to leverage the service, and there cannot be a single approach to this. So we are constantly working with the AWS service team, also our account team, you know, to bring this AI mindset on how to detect, prevent, and mitigate these threats. And at the same time, to get visibility for security teams of, you know, what's going uh, behind the scenes with all these services. Uh, but towards the end, I would say it all boils down to having a solid security foundation. And one of the best decisions that we took at Booking.com was to build this foundation with security baselines, having secure by default architecture patterns, because now with this solid foundation, we can onboard any new capability uh, with ease and at like a way faster pace than it would have been without, uh, which would have in, haven't been possible without this foundation. Thank you for sharing your vision with us. Um, at AWS, we're excited to continue to support Booking.com in its cloud journey, the Gen AI journey, as well as achieving the vision that you just shared with us. Thank you for being here today. Yeah, but thank you for having me here. It was a pleasure talking with you. Excellent. Thank you for watching this episode of Cloud Adventures, and we'll see you next time.